Hey guys, Trevor here from LoomCube to break down the art of macro photography. In my opinion, one of the most mind-blowing forms of photography you could do where you can find very small objects, shoot them very up close, and make them appear life-size. There can be some nuances with macro photography that make it a little bit harder to capture that perfectly crisp macro shot. So in this video, we will go over some tips on how to get great macro shots as well as the gear that you need to start shooting today. So first off, what gear do you need to actually shoot macro photography? Well, first you need a camera, a full frame camera preferably. You need a macro lens. Macro lenses have a very close minimum focusing distance. So you can get very up close and personal with the subject that you are shooting. Macro lenses have what's called one-to-one -one magnification range where it makes small objects appear very big and life-size. And the second piece of gear you'll probably want when starting out is a tripod. Shooting on a tripod will allow you to slow things down and really control your shutter speed. If you're shooting handheld, you probably don't want to shoot below a 1 100th of a second shutter speed, but on a tripod, you can lower that down and it gives you more flexibility with your setting. But for the sake of today's video, we'll be shooting handheld just so we can be quick and move around. <laughs> loom cube. And the third thing you'll want when you're shooting macro photography is a light source like a loom cube. Your biggest issue you'll have when you start shooting macro photography is the tiny, tiny depth of field. If you're shooting at a aperture of 2.8, the amount of area in your image that's in focus will be a tiny little sliver. So what you need to do is shoot at an aperture like f8 or f11 or f16 so most of your image is in focus and sharp. One, you can raise your ISO of course, you can lower your shutter speed which is why a tripod is super handy or you can introduce a light source like a loom cube. So one of the hardest parts about macro photography is drawing focus on your subject especially when you're in macro range that one-to-one -one magnification. So a tip that I like to do is put your camera in manual focus in that one-to-one -one ratio, that macro range. And then when you find your subject, you're gonna keep your focus ring set and then you'll move towards and away from your subject. And fire off a couple shots and as you're moving closer and away, the product will kinda come in and go out of focus and fire a couple extra shots just to ensure that at least one of them is sharp and in focus. All right, if you're shooting macro and you find a water drop, make sure you shoot it. I brought a little spray bottle just in case we don't find any, but I found a natural one here. So shoot it at a high F value. Shoot it like F14, F22, and sometimes you can get these really cool star bursts if the sun is shining and hitting the water droplet. So let's see if we can get one here. Where is it? Oh. Here we are chasing bees. Oh, see, I knew this would happen. I will not be satisfied unless I capture the bee. You guys are like, dude, make me sign a waiver or something. Oh, oh, he's upset. All right, let me try to get this water drop thing because this thing isn't moving. And one of the biggest pieces of advice I could lend to you when shooting macro is to be super patient. One, when you're walking around and looking, you know, it takes a long time to find like that perfect leaf or an insect or something you wanna shoot. And then two, I've never shot more out of focus, blurry images in my entire life. So when you're shooting, be super patient, mess around with your settings and just know that it'll take, you know, a couple shots until you get a keeper. Let's see here. What kind of macro opportunities? are presenting themselves. And a tip when you're shooting macro and trying to get your whole subject in focus is try to be on a level plane with your subject. You really want to even up so that the entire face of your subject is facing your camera. If you're at an angle because your depth of field is so small, part of your subject may be out of focus and part of it might be in. And if you're going for that, more props to you, but I like my whole subject in the macro world to be in focus. So try to get on an even plane and you'll have to mess around with the angle to find what looks best.
solid. Macro, mind blowing. So another tip you can do when shooting macro is swap the background out. Since your scene is so small, you really don't need a big object to completely change the background element in your scene. So I'm basically looking for something to swap out the background on this little plant shot right here. Hey, I found something orange. <laughs> A uh, piece of trash that was left here, we'll be throwing this away, but it'll actually make a solid little background behind our plant. So let's see what we can do. Hmm. No, no, no. Ow. All right, so the piece of trash just looked like a piece of trash. So we're gonna try to use this palm fronds that was laying on the ground to see how that changes the background element of this. Another tip, angles. The most convenient angle to shoot is never the shot that's gonna look the best. So don't be afraid to get down on the ground and fight the right, oh my God, those squirrels are going ham. Oh my gosh, we are in danger. All around us. Oh, sheesh, parkour. Find your angle. So don't be afraid to get down on the ground and find the right angle to give your subject justice and make it look super cool. I'm not gonna get a cool shot out of this. <laughs> and when you're shooting macro, I personally prefer constant light for a few reasons. One, with constant light, you can see how the light is affecting your scene in real time. And since you're shooting such small subjects, your light source completely changes the mood of your image. So if you wanna move your light around to the back of your subject, you'll see exactly how that affects your shot before having to take an image. And when shooting flash, you know, you can get to the same endpoint, but it's a lot of shooting, adjusting, and going from there. But with constant light, you're in real time and seeing your adjustments. I find that I can get to my end goal image faster when I'm using constant light and macro compared to if I was using a flash. Well, there you have it. Step number one to mastering the art of macro photography. We hope this helped you get a better understanding for how to pick up your camera and start shooting macro shots today. If you do use some of these practices or techniques in your own content, be sure to tag us on Instagram so we can see what you're working with. We'll see you next time. Oh, how's that? Oh, come on, man. He's sick. Oh, dude, he's just avoiding me. He likes you. Is he on the other side of this, though? Oh, he's out of there. Oh.